Joining us now, former Deputy National Security Advisor Katie McFarlane. Your reaction to up to 30,000 Afghan refugees could be heading here. The U.S. is about being a safe harbor nation. Officials keep telling us the border has been really abused under the Biden, under the Biden administration. What's the plan to bring them in? Who's vetting them? Nobody. I mean, here's the problem. They're not going to get those people out of Afghanistan. We're going to be really hard-pressed to get all the American citizens out, despite the happy talk that the Biden administration and the Pentagon are saying they're going to have a really hard time to get out eight to 10,000 Americans who are still left. And they're spread all over the country. And right now, the only way out of that country is the Kabul airport. And it's surrounded by Taliban fighters who today are saying Americans can leave. But there's no guarantee they're going to let Americans leave tomorrow. There's no way we're getting out 100, I mean, 10,000 people in the next couple of days or in the next two but weeks. But what about the rest? So when you talk about... And you're... They're, 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 I don't you're know when we no, get to those wait, people. Wait, wait, hang on. <laughs> you're saying nobody's vetting the refugees coming in? It's my understanding that they have a process to vet them, but they're not getting to it. And that when you see the number of people who are just piling on the planes who are coming to the United States, and these are all political refugees. I mean, they are the definition of who we're supposed to except in the refugee program. But I don't under, it's my understanding that there is no systematic vetting. There are personnel at the American embassy who themselves are trying to get out, who are supposed to be vetting, but it's all happening in real time. You know, we should have been vetting people months ago, of people who might potentially come to the United States if Afghanistan collapsed. When I was in the Trump administration, the plan was to get all Americans out by the end of May, by the time the spring fighting offensive started. And, to, and we had started evacuating Americans. We had started bringing um, Afghan, you know, friendly Afghans who had worked for us, who had been loyal to us. We had started bringing them home. But when President Biden came in, in his zeal to undo anything Donald Trump ever did, they stopped that. They stopped bringing Americans home. Yeah. That's why we've got the big crisis now. We have sound coming in, video coming in, shots being fired in residential neighborhoods in Kabul. The Taliban have taken to uh, armed trucks and patrolling the streets. Uh, shots were fired at Kabul airport as well. The, the fall of Afghanistan, Kitty, has been heard around the world. Germany, France, UK reacting. The president gave a defiant teleprompted script yesterday. He blamed Trump. He blamed the Afghan government. He blamed Afghan people for not leaving when tens of thousands wanted to leave. Biden could have renegotiated Trump's withdrawal deal. He didn't. He also forgot to blame the Taliban in his speech. Here's the thing. 20 terror groups are now operating inside Afghanistan. What's to say that any one of those groups could say to somebody, one of the members, go to the southern border, pay a human smuggler, go into the U.S.? What's to stop that? There's nothing to stop that. And that is, in fact, the big vulnerability. We have an open southern border. And we know it's no longer just people from Central America or Mexico. It's, it's people from 50 to 70 countries are coming through that southern border. I'm worried that what happens next is Americans are going to be taken hostage. Americans are going to be kidnapped. Americans are going to be assassinated. And the tribal leaders in Afghanistan, the Taliban leaders, they're currently this week, they're all united. But they will start fighting each other because they've never been united when there's not been a common national enemy to them. So they're gonna, there's going to be a multi-party civil war in Afghanistan. And you can bet that some of those tribal areas, some of those tribal leaders are going to try to send people into the United States. Now, some of them might be good guys. But I worry that because there's no vetting at our southern border right now, that it's hard to see what we're ever going to really get ahead of vetting the tens of thousands, if not million people who are coming in a year on our southern border. Well, should the president call a national emergency at the border right now? Of course he should. And, and he should institute the policies that were in place and that were working before at the southern border. And he should also, he has the ability to override a lot of the um, regulations about, um, about who you let in as a political refugees. And he's not doing any of it. He's blaming somebody else, never okay. him. Katie McFarlane, thank you so much for joining us. You're going to come back soon.